day after day and year after year, as we tune our hearts and ears to the Holy Spirit, God does a mysterious work in us. We're transformed from glory to glory. Being led by the Holy Spirit at the, is the very heart of this life that God has designed for every one of his children, including you and me. And it's not reserved to some super duper Christians. No, the one common denominator among all people who learn to hear and to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance is, is this, they're intentional. So tonight, I wanna unpack this truth, following the Holy Spirit's guidance. Join me tonight as we just talk about it a little further, this tug of war, and how can we allow ourselves and permit ourselves to be in this place for the Holy Spirit to produce those fruits in us. Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit is even now beginning to do a work because we're intentional. We showed up tonight. May we show up in spirit, soul, and body. May we be ready for having and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth and to reveal those areas that need uh, to be cut off so that we can just welcome and surrender to the fullness of what God, what you want to do in each of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Galatians 5.25, if we live by the Holy Spirit, let us walk by the Holy Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Holy Spirit. All throughout that, that one verse, we hear let, you know, our conduct controlled. It's an intentional uh, just decision that we're going, just as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. There is an intentional, purposeful decision that's happening. In order to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, we have to follow his guidance. In addition to yielding to his conviction, we have to become aware of the Holy Spirit's leading, even as we read through the Word of God. You know, there's more and more information that we can discover simply by reading the Word. It's God's handbook for you and me to understand this great life that He made possible through His Son, Jesus Christ. And as we read the Word, we, we begin to have a better understanding and, and, and a discernment of the Holy Spirit's leading and the guidance. There's a conviction that is awakened and stirred up, right? Because God's word, we know in, in Timothy, it, it will correct us. It will, uh, you know, cause us to, to be equipped uh, for that life that's ours in Christ. And there's a fruit that the Holy Spirit will also bring to pass. We, we have uh, just sure signs of his presence. And that fruit is found in Galatians 5, uh, verses 22 and 23. And when we are being led by the Holy Spirit, or as one translation says, controlled, the Holy Spirit will produce these fruits in our lives. The fruits include love and joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, there is a few scriptures before that in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, we learn about some other fruits. The opposite of the fruit of the Spirit are the deeds of the flesh. And Paul writes, the acts of the flesh, and mind you, this was written to believers, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, fractions, envy, drunkenness, gorgies, and the like. We can distinguish who is leading our life just based on our actions, thought patterns, behaviors. And if we're cultivating and producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we will truly be led by the Holy Spirit and we are walking in accordance with God's will and these fruits will be a byproduct of it. But there is a war going on and we, there are times we need to 
change direction. That's where repentance comes in, right? Romans 8 verse 13 says, If you do what your sinful old selves want you to do, you will die to sin. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you destroy those acts to which the body can be led, you have life. There is life when we follow and are led by the Holy Spirit. And if we see the acts of this sinful nature that's being cultivated and uh, produced in our life, then we are following uh, and we are led by that sinful nature and we are walking in accordance to that nature. But we don't have to stay there. We can change direction. And we can instead surrender to the Holy Spirit's leading. And we can change that direction today. How do we do it? We ask God to help us. We repent. We ask God to show us and to allow us to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's conviction. And we ask him to help cultivate his fruit in our life. Being led by the Spirit, it means to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance as revealed by the Word of God. And throughout our lives, we can constantly be challenged to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit rather than the leading of our sinful nature. But there's that challenge, isn't it? And it's hard, but we have the help of God. And we can follow the Holy Spirit's leading throughout our lives, and we can bring glory to God as, as an outcome. I'm reminded of Joshua 1 8, where here he was embarking on this new role, this responsibility, this anointed purpose. And God said, you know, to meditate on that word day and night. Let it not depart out of your mouth. And you will deal wisely. You will know good success. My friend, God wants us to know good success. But in this world, there is this push and pull. And we need to allow that Holy Spirit, we, we, we want and should desire to be intentional, just as we are in the Word of God, day and night, to allow the Holy Spirit's conviction to have His full work and to surround ourselves in ways in which we can thrive, that we can be um, not just surviving. So what are the benefits of being led by the Spirit? Well, there's many of them, and it's not enough to try to make our plans. We must include God in them, and God will show us how, and he will show us when to do things. Sometimes we feel uneasy. There might be a lack of peace before we do something, and many times this is God speaking to us, wanting to guide us in all that we do. And if you want to reap the benefits, you must allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Be intentional. So today, we're going to look at some of the benefits that is a byproduct of being led by the Holy Spirit. And at times, like we are living today, we need this more than ever. So the first benefit I, I just wanted to share with you that has been very important in my life, and that is the benefit of the power over sin. Romans 8 verses 13 through 14 says, if we live accordance to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit has been put, uh, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Holy Spirit, these are the sons of God. So when you become a Christian, you have received special power, a superpower that you did not have before. You can now refuse to sin. You have the power. It's been broken by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We can overcome. Though there will be a struggle because there's this war inside of us that is outlined in the scripture in Romans, right? If you live according to the flesh or if by the spirit. So there's this flesh and the spirit that is tug a war. So you want to, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the a mouth of God. We want to be strong spiritually, and we do that by getting into the word, by praying. I love praying in the Holy Spirit. I love to uh, make sure I'm worshiping, uh, and I create some Christian disciplines in my life to, 
to be ensure that I am in this place to experience God's very best. And uh, with that, the more we listen to the Holy Spirit, the stronger we become. It is beneficial that we take a moment each day and then ask God, what are his plans for us? And do not just make plans, right? We commit our works before him. He will bring to pass. We ask what God thinks about the plans we're about to make. And God, he will save us from many dangers as we seek his face all the days of our life. He will prepare the way just as he did for Joshua as he entered in to that land that God had promised for him. God has a promise for you and me. Another benefit is aligning our plans with God's plans. And so in Acts 16, we find that God can change plans at any moment. Here's Paul. He's, he's planning on, on going in this direction. It was certainly a good work to share the good news. And the apostles were wanting to also do what God had in mind. But here we read that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach a word in Asia. Great work. Not the right time. And so, after all, um, they shifted gears, and in due course, God revealed where they were to go at that time. God knew when the hearts of people would be ready and where they would be ready. So, uh, he knew that there was something better, and God's plans are always greater than our own. Flexibility, that's the key in God's kingdom. He may tell you to do something different, than what you're thinking and your plans may change you might start out and then he'll shift you again so instead of being upset or frustrated learn to go with the flow as he's leading you you know in my days growing up in southern california i loved to body surf and it was all about adjusting to the wave knowing and understanding the flow and when i did that if i could shift suddenly i would enjoy a good ride God has a great ride for you and me. He's got a purpose. He has a plan he wants to fulfill in all of us. And it's all about adjustments as his Holy Spirit is tweaking and guiding us each and every step of the way. So understand that there are benefits to hearing God's voice. Be available to the, the, the subtle, maybe adjustments that God will make along the way. And be ever mindful of the power of sin uh, we've been redeemed and it no longer has that effect if we stay true to God's word and allow that that word to renew our mind so uh, there are benefits we recall for example Moses and Exodus you know there was this burning bush it caught his attention and then God called them from the midst of the bush and just like God uh, spoke to Moses and, and gave uh, and revealed a plan for him uh, that uh, would compel him into this next season that God had, God, God often wants to catch our attention. And we must be willing to look and to see it. And as Christians, if we're not careful, we're too busy most of the time, and we will just totally miss the moment. That's why I love that verse, be still and know that I am God. We need to create that space for that encounter with God. Sometimes we need to lean in and hear God's voice, that still small voice, because he's always speaking, but we are not always tuned in to what he is saying. And we're not always aware when he changes those plans, unless we are sensitive to his leading at each and every turn. The Holy Spirit is wanting and desiring to have a dialogue with us, to, to be in that place, to be led. Um, and so when we are, uh, He, God Almighty, He is wanting to lead us in paths that give us hope and a future. And He desires all of us, not just some, all of us, to learn to hear from Him. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct our steps. He wants to be involved in our daily lives. So I have this invitation 
Choose today to allow God to guide you in every detail of your life. Allow him, be intentional, and then watch and see God's faithful. As you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Thank you for joining us. It was fun to share this word. I'm excited about this series, and I look forward to sharing with you the next week. Have a good night, everyone.